Hello, today I'm sharing some staple must-have makeup products that I can't live without. Well, one is actually a skincare product, but I still can't live without it. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. Let's get into these tried and true products that I love and I think you will too. Now, all of these products are available from Sephora. The Sephora Spring VIB sale is upon us. Every single tier can use the code save now and save some money. I have all of the codes, discounts, and specifics in my description box and pinned as the top comment so you can see more details. And I have other videos I've already done during this spring sale linked for you in the top corner and down in the description box so you can check those out after you finish this one because I don't have much if any product overlap between videos and I like to do extra videos during this time for those of you who like to do a little bit of extra shopping to save some money on these beauty products. I know I shop several times while the sale is going on because you can use the code as many times as you want and I like to restock, buy some backups, buy some gifts, things like that. I will also link everything I'm sharing with you today in my description box as I always do. I'm going to start with a concealer that I use almost every single day and that rarely gets talked about on my channel. I think because I concentrate so much on under eye concealing that face concealing sometimes gets lost, but the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer is a staple for me that has been for a long time. The shade Canal is what I have been using for a long time now for my light, medium, neutral, leaning, warm skin tone. The reason why why I like this for my face so much is because it's soft matte. I don't like that under my eyes, but on my face, that finish is really lovely. I like to pinpoint conceal with a brush and then tap it out with my finger and it blends in and looks completely natural and it stays all day. I also love that it's in pot form because, you know, if I'm traveling, it's a cream formulation rather than a liquid. I've never had any issues with that. This is a staple for me and as far as I see it, will be for a long time. I wasn't quite sure if I was going to share this in this video, but because I use Makeup by Mario lip liner so regularly and have on almost a daily basis since discovering it, I felt like it needed to go in this video. Now the shade that you're seeing me apply is smoky pink, which when applied very lightly is extremely close to my own natural lip shade. It's a nice pinky brown that looks very natural and works with any lip shade, or I can wear it alone or with a gloss. Now the original shade that I fell in love with was Hue. It went viral and took months and months and months to come back in stock. I was a little aggravated with that. I would say it's a lighter version of this shade and I just really liked it. Now, if it is still in stock during this sale, I'm going to pick that up as well as a backup of Smoky Pink. So you'll probably see that in my Sephora haul. I just think the formula is nice and creamy. It glides on smoothly, yet it's not thick. It feels lightweight, which I really like, especially if I'm wearing it underneath another lip product and it lasts really nicely too. It keeps my lip products on longer, keeps them from bleeding. And I don't know, I just, I really like this formula. I am hoping that if his shades run out, they don't take so long to come back in stock because this is a good pencil formula. It's no secret that I like a good one and done eyeshadow stick, cream eyeshadow, something that I can swipe on and blend out with my finger or a brush. It is what I did today and is the quickest, easiest way for me to get ready and still look, you know, kind of put together. Now, one of the easiest ways for me to achieve that is with an eyeshadow stick. Laura Mercier and Bobbi Brown are two that I've been using for a long time. Laura Mercier, the longest, but both are really great. Now this section, a third of this bin, is completely full of mostly Laura Mercier caviar sticks with, I would say, three or four Bobbi Brown eyeshadow sticks. I, I can't fit any more in here at all. I'm not gonna worry so much with shades. It doesn't matter if you get a matte or a shimmer. It's really your preference. What you're seeing me apply in this clip is the shade Copper, and I'm just blending it out with my finger. If I want a little bit more pigment or to even things out, I will rub my finger in it and tap it over the top. It's so easy, but you could do that same thing with 
a matte shade just as easily. But I don't just use these as eyeshadows. I use them as liners all the time. I dip an angled or a straight brush right in the product and slightly extend my lower lash line by making a mark. And then I press that brush along my upper lash line. Then I take a small pencil brush and smudge upwards a little bit to just kind of give a smoky effect. It's so easy. It makes everything look so much more put together than if I just applied mascara and walked out the door, especially as I get older and my eyes start looking smaller. The older we get, the smaller our eyes start to look. I lean towards Laura Mercier a little bit more than I do Bobbi Brown. I don't know why exactly, if it's because I've been using her caviar sticks a little bit longer or if I just prefer her shades or her shade selection a little bit more, but I don't think you can go wrong with either brand. I love eyeshadow palettes as much as the next person, but I don't think you need a full eyeshadow palette to get a nice, quick, everyday look. You can blend something as easy as the shade I have on. You can go a little bit deeper and get a sultry look or go a little bit more neutral or brighter. You can have a lot of fun with eyeshadow sticks and they blend in easily to one another if you don't want one and done two. These are staples in my life. They have been for a long time. I use the deeper shades as liners even when I use eyeshadow palettes because they last all day. These are absolute must-haves for me as I know they are for many of you, so I definitely wanted to include them in this video. I've talked about foundations in each of these videos for various reasons. Now, in my first video I did, Sephora bestsellers that are worth your money, a couple of those could have easily fit into this video because they are holy grail staples for me, but I'm not overlapping. So if you wanna know what those are, be sure to go check that video out after you watch this one. Now, the ones I'm putting in here, I'm actually giving you two for one here. I, I can't really talk about one without talking about the other and you'll understand why here in a second. Armani Luminous Silk is a staple that so many people talk about because it's so versatile. It really is just such a beautiful foundation that wears well on its own, but it also mixes into other foundations beautifully. I have not talked about it a ton on my channel because it does give a glowier finish to the skin, which I personally find beautiful, but in my hot, humid weather, it doesn't always wear the best unless we're having milder temperatures. Now, if we are, I love this foundation and I do like to keep it on hand as a mixer or for those times of year. So my alternative for this that lasts better when we're having hot, humid weather and I still want that radiant, soft, candlelit glow type of look on my combination skin that gets shiny in the T-zone is Laura Mercier Flawless Lumiere Radiance Perfecting Foundation. It gives me that look without wearing away, breaking apart, or making me look like an oil slick once my own natural oils start to come through my T-zone the way they do, especially in humidity. So if you are similar or if you are just flat out oily and you typically can't wear radiant or glowy foundations, this is one that has been a staple for me for a long time because I can wear it and it does look beautiful and it lasts for those times when this one just doesn't work for me. Although when it works, it works really well. So I had to mention both of these. They're both so flattering for all skin types under various circumstances and great for mature skin. I don't talk about highlighters very much on my channel because there are very few that just really blow me away. So if they do, they typically make a pretty big impression. Now this one, I almost didn't even try. I thought it was going to be too shimmery, too sparkly, and it really surprised me. It's one of my favorite highlighters. This is Benefit Cookie. If you've tried this, let me know. If you've tried any of these products, let me know down below. Let me know what you thought. This is such a pretty champagne highlighter, which is my preferred highlighter shade, I guess is what I would say. I mean, look at that sheen. You can see how it applies to my cheek. I always feel like my lighting never really shows off highlighters. I mean, I already applied it but it just gives that natural, dewy, glowy look versus a glittery, obvious highlighter look. And that's, as I get older, what I want. Highlighters are supposed to lift and enhance. That's what I want my highlighter to do. I don't want it to make me look like I'm shining from outer space, you know? I want it to smooth and flatter, and that is what I feel like I get from this highlighter, which is not what I thought I would get. But this is a good one. This has been a staple since I found it. 
have another grouping for you. So this time you have three rolled into one. I was going to share one favorite staple everyday mascara that I reach for quite often, but then I realized I actually have three that I just, I rotate probably more than any others on an everyday basis. This isn't for nighttime or drama. This is just good everyday volume lengthening that I'm looking for. So we have Benefit Roller Lash, Wander Beauty Unlashed, and Lancome Edol. Now there is a waterproof formula of this that I actually want to pick up during this sale. So you'll probably see that in my haul. If you've tried that, let me know how you like it. If you've tried both, let me know how you like it in comparison. I'm interested in that. I have fine sparse lashes that are stick straight. And a lot of times these everyday mascaras will straighten my lashes right back out, or they'll give me length, but not enough volume, or they'll make me look like I have just like six or seven little spiky lashes. I don't like that. So these three give me enough length, enough volume, enough separation. They all have curved wands with the Lancome and Benefit being spiky plastic bristles. The Benefit has the smallest brush and Wander Beauty has the fluffiest brush out of all of them. I think it does give me the most volume and length, but I do like all of them. I rotate them all and this just kind of gives you options if you have a brand preference and that's why I'm including all three. For those of you who are looking for everyday length and volume that holds a curl, I think all of these are really good. I know some of you cringe at setting your under eye concealer, but I have to because I crease no matter what concealer, no matter how much or how little I use right under my lash line and it just looks terrible. I've tried setting spray, it just does not work the same as using a really good finely milled setting powder and my one concealer consistent under eye setting powder that just works beautifully no matter what is Pat McGrath. This is the lightest shade. It looks really white, but it's actually translucent once you blend it out. It's smoothing. It doesn't emphasize texture. It's very finely milled. I think this is my second or third one. It's got a nice dent in it. So I'm debating getting another one now or waiting. I don't know. I feel like I'm getting a lot from this sale already between trying new things and getting backups and restocks. So I may wait on this. I'm not sure. I, I don't like to be without it though because it is my staple holy grail under eye setting powder even though I will dip into others this is the one that I swear by. Even if you've tried all the others, if you've never tried this one, try dusting a light bit of this under your eye. It may just change your perspective on under eye setting powders. Now, if you're a regular subscriber, you know we cannot get through any kind of Sephora savings event or Sephora sale without me mentioning Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip Plump and Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lips. I love both of these. It depends on what you're looking for. Both of them are giving you that hybrid of makeup and treatment all rolled into one. You're getting hydration, nourishment, and color. They feel good. There's a reason why these sell out frequently. People love these. Now this is another product that it's not so much about shades and I almost hate recommending shades in videos because these go out of stock. Shades I recommend won't be available for you anymore. Now the shade that I have on right now is Orchid and I'm hoping you can see how lightly I'm applying it. This is a very soft formula you can't really press too hard. If you press it hard, it will kind of smush the product and you don't want to do that. There is some opacity. So you are getting pigmentation. They're not sticky. They're creamy. They're nourishing. They're all the things I said before, but they're just so easy to throw in your purse and apply on the go. They're great for this time of year. I think I said that in the winter too, though. They're great for any time of year, actually. So if you want just that straight nourishing lip product, definitely go for the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip Balm. Now I do think that they both plump and flatter and smooth lip lines and feel really good. But if you don't want that minty sensation, I would say stick with the original formula, the Maracuja Juicy Lip Balm. 
If you like that minty sensation and want a little bit more plumpness, go with the Maracuja Juicy Lip Plump. I do feel like these might last a little bit longer too and give you a little bit more opacity. This is the shade Primrose. Last time I looked, it was out of stock. It is one of my favorite shades though. And I'm hoping that you can see it is a little bit more pink than Orchid. These are actually two of my favorite shades and there's a lot of shine with these. It's like a gloss, a balm, a lipstick, and a lip treatment all in one. So you're getting everything you need during the day in a very flattering formula. I cannot recommend these enough. I probably over recommend them because I just think they're great. Another lip product that I swear by because it has made a big difference in my lip pigmentation, especially the older I've gotten. You know, as we get older, our lip pigment starts to fade and become more uneven. And this has made a big difference. There is an ingredient, tripeptide one, in it that gives more definition to your lip line. And I really didn't think that was gonna happen until I started getting comments from people asking me if I had my lips tattooed or if I had permanent lip liner, and I don't. But this Drunk Elephant Lippy Balm has made a difference with my lip pigmentation. You can see here that the inner portion of my lips is lighter than the outer portion. And if I stopped using this for a period of time, or if I lessen the frequency significantly, I, I do notice a difference in the unevenness of my lip line coming back because I was really noticing a big difference in how uneven one lip line was on one side to the other. And I don't notice that anymore. I'm very happy with this. So this has the tripeptide one. It also has a couple of hydrating oils. Avocado is one. Avocado oil alone is an excellent source of omega-3 fatty acids, vitamins A, D, and E, and antioxidants, making it great with helping skin barrier function. I'm all about that. Helping hold in intense moisture to soften rough chap lips. And I just, I find this is great, not only for keeping my lips soft, but for helping with pigmentation. As I've said, already. This is a great product that I always try to keep on hand. When I notice it getting low, I always repurchase. Another product that I always repurchase when it's running low is the Origins Original Skin Retexturizing Mask with Rose Clay. I've talked about this a ton on my channel because it is such a great clay mask that doesn't dry your skin out. That is an issue that I've had with many clay masks in the past. This cleans deeply while refining texture and it's not rough on your skin. It helps refine pores and smooth skin and brighten overall. I notice a difference the next day after using this every single time. I think they say this is good for normal to oily skin, but I've used this in winter when I've had dry areas and it's never made those worse. I, I think this is great for all skin types if you're wanting to deeply cleanse your skin and clarify and brighten but not dry your skin out. This is one mask that stays in my life permanently. I've gone through numerous tubes and it stays in my life. To see more recommendations, be sure to check out these videos. I have some great ones in there for you and stay tuned for another video coming out very shortly and my haul to see see what I ended up with. I'm grabbing some staple products, some restocks, and trying some new products to test and review for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!